This is Pam from the Birch Cottage blog. In this video, I want to show you how to make a large Christmas stocking. You're going to need fabric. You'll need fabric for the outside of your stocking. You'll need fabric for the lining. And you'll also need some interfacing. You'll want some thread, uh, scissors, rotary cutter, and a ruler come in handy, and a pencil if you don't already have that. So, this is the fabric that I picked out for my lining, just a basic white fabric. You could use anything that you wanted. I was trying to keep it a little traditional. And then the red for the outside of my stocking. I have two pieces of interfacing. I have fabric for my cuff. And I have interfacing for the cuff. And I have fabric for my loop, which is going to how you hang your stocking. And like I said, besides your fabric and your interfacing, you'll want some matching thread, a pair of scissors. Uh, I love to use a rotary cutter, a ruler, and a self-healing mat. Now let's take a look at how to make your Christmas stocking. So this is a large Christmas stocking. The pattern itself measures 10 inches across the top. It's about 23 inches wide at its largest point and 22 and a quarter inches long. So you're going to need fabric for the outside, fabric for the lining, interfacing or batting, and you will cut two of each of those. You can pin your pattern in place, you can trace around it, or you can just cut around your pattern. I use these little rocks that I crocheted as pattern weights and use them to help hold everything in place. And then using my rotary cutter, I just trim around the pattern following the outline of the pattern and I'm cutting the batting or the interfacing and the outer fabric at the same time. My lining fabric was a little bit narrower so I wanted to cut it separately. You can see how easily and quickly you can cut out a pattern using a rotary cutter. And like I said, I didn't need to pin it down. I just used my fabric weights to hold it in place and then I'm just following the outline of my pattern. Okay, so that's the interfacing for the batting two pieces of that and two pieces for the outer fabric. And then I need to cut out two pieces for my lining fabric. Again, I'm going to lay my pattern out on the fabric and I'll just cut it out just like I did my outside fabric for my Christmas stocking. I like to use my ruler and, ro and rotary cutter to get nice straight crisp lines and then I'll just follow along the pattern to cut out my lining for my Christmas stocking. All right, once I have those pieces cut out I'm ready to cut out my cuff and for that you'll need to cut one piece of fabric that's 10 and a half inches high by 19 inches wide and you'll also cut out one piece of batting that's four and three quarter inches high by 18 and a half inches wide. So just a little bit narrower than your cuff and half as high as your cuff. So I'm just cutting out my fabric. Again, the fabric piece will be 10 and a half inches by 19 inches. And pay attention if you're using directional fabric to which way you lay your pattern out on the fabric. And then for my loop, I'm just going to cut a two and a half inch wide by a six and a half inch piece of fabric. The next thing I'll do is to fuse my interfacing to the wrong side of the outer piece of fabric for my stockings. I like to use a pressing mat, or, which is just a cotton dish towel over top of my fabric that just keeps any of the interfacing, the stickiness from getting on my iron. And I'll press it. I also like to use steam. It helps it to adhere better to the fabric. And I will repeat that for the other outer piece of the Christmas stocking. 
Once you have fused the interfacing to the wrong side of your Christmas stockings, you'll take the cuff piece, fold it in half, and press it lengthwise. Then take the interfacing and apply it to one half of the Christmas stocking on the wrong side. And then I will take the loop and iron it in half long ways. Then I'll do a quarter of an inch and fold it over each of the long edges, fold it back in half and press it. Now we're ready to take this to our sewing machine. I'm going to line up the lining pieces right sides together and just clip the edges to keep it all aligned properly. And then I'm going to stitch a 3 8 of an inch seam around the entire stocking but leaving oh, a 3 to 4 inch opening along the side for turning the stocking right side out later on. So again, start at the top, stitch down to like the calf leave a three or four inch opening and then continue stitching all the way around to the top. You'll leave the top open and you'll leave an opening on the side for turning your fabric. Then we will sew the short end of our cuffs together. So with the fabrics right side together, I'll lined up the shorter end ends Clip those in place and again sew a 3 8 inch stitch along that edge and be sure to back stitch to the beginning and end of your stitch to reinforce your stitches. And then you're going to take your loop that you've already pressed and you're going to do a very narrow like eighth of an inch seam down each side of the loop. So I'll do an eighth of an inch stitch down one side which will close up the loop and then I'll do another eighth of an inch stitch down the opposite side which will just create uh, some top stitching. And now we're ready to stitch the outer stocking pieces. So right sides together, line up the edges and clip in place and for the outside stocking, we're going to stitch around the stocking. We'll start at the top edge, stitch all the way around to the other top edge, leaving the top opening open. So again, I'm using a 3 8 inch seam allowance and stitching all the way around the Christmas stocking. When you're through stitching the outer fabric for your Christmas stocking, you're ready to turn it right side out. Then we want to take the cuff and place it over top of the outer fabric of the Christmas stocking. You want to line up your seams, the side seams, and then just clip that in place. And just add a few clips around the top to keep the cuff and the Christmas stocking lined up or along the raw edges. And then after we get the cuff uh, clipped in place, we're going to attach the loop. <coughs> now it's up to you where you place the loop. You can place the loop along the seam. You can place the loop back to the left of the seam and you can place it on the back to the right of the seam. It depends on how you like to hang your Christmas stocking. So keep that in mind when you place the loop on your stocking. Whether you want your stockings, the toes to be facing towards the left, if you do, then you will put your loop to the left of the seam. If you want your the toes of your stockings to be facing towards the right, then you will place your loop to the right of the seam. And just clip that 
um, loop in place. Then you're going to take the lining of the fabric of the stocking. It's already, it's wrong side out. So you're going to stuff your Christmas stocking and the cuff down into the lining where you'll now have right sides together. And you will uh, remove your clips and reclip it in place, lining up your seams and lining up the raw edges. I like to keep the seams open for stitching to help it lay flatter. And again, I'm going to use a 3 8 inch seam allowance to stitch this closed. So once I have everything clipped and lined up the way that I want, I'll put it on my sewing machine. I'll do a little back stitch to secure my stitches. And then I will stitch around the entire perimeter of the top of the Christmas stocking using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. This attaches the lining to the outer fabric and the cuff and the loop. They will all be secured. So continue stitching using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. You can use bigger if you're more comfortable with that. Just be sure to trim your seams afterwards. And I do a little extra back stitching back and forth over the loop that helps, you know, when you fill that Christmas stocking, it may get heavy. But so I do a couple of back stitches back and forth across that to help secure it in place. And that is that. We have the opening in the lining. I'll pull the Christmas stocking out, the cuff out. Turn everything so it's right side out. There we go. I'll turn the lining so it's right side out. And then that opening that I left in the lining fabric, we'll stitch that closed. Just kind of fold the seams inward and do a narrow stitching along that opening to close it up. You could also stitch it by hand if you prefer, but it's on the inside of the stocking. No one will see it unless they take the lining out of the stocking. So I like to just stitch it with my sewing machine. Again, I'm using a really narrow, like eighth of an inch uh, from the edge of to stitch that opening closed. Remove any, snip off any threads, stuff the lining into the stocking. And then I'll just kind of use my hand to press those seams open, push everything out where it should be, line up the cuff with the top of the uh, stocking. Now, some people like to have a little bit of the lining sticking out and you can totally do that or you can have it so the lining so that you fold your cuff right on the seam and the lining is completely inside the stocking. Or you can fold it down a little more so more of the lining is shown. It depends on what fabric you used and what look that you like. Once you get all the seams pressed out and the cuff folded the way you want it. I like to take it over to my ironing board and my iron and press it in place so it has a nice crisp seam and gives a nice finished look to the Christmas stocking. You could do some top stitching on your Christmas stocking around the cuff too if you want. I don't usually do that. And here's your finished Christmas stocking. As you can see, it's a nice size. It's all ready to be hung and filled with goodies. I hope you like this tutorial on how to sew a large Christmas stocking. Be sure to like the video below, subscribe to my channel, and visit me over on the Birch Cottage blog for more ideas. Thank you.